Hey guys, Brady here. I am deciding to try my hand at vlogging so that my family can kind of see the videos that I take or see some of the experiences I have instead of just telling them about it. So here I am. Uh, this was September 1st. We were down uh, at Sedona. When I say we, it was me and another friend of mine that I met in Prescott. I had taken off, but I forgot to turn the camera on, so I had to take my helmet off and then turn it on. And by that time, he had already taken off and was heading towards the mountains, um, the Red Rocks, north of us. So I took a left, I'm coming around, and now I realize I gotta catch up to him uh, because I've been going south for a bit. So what I'm gonna do here is I put up my brakes up on the magnets and then these tabs that you see me pushing in right here are for uh, my trims and I'm letting them all the way out which changes the trajectory of the wing so that it basically doubles my speed. And then I um, do tip steering which is these little things that I'm grabbing right now. So at any rate, I'm gonna catch up with him and we're headed straight to the Red Rocks of Sedona. So great flight. So here I'm just actually doing some low flying and letting off the gas a little bit. And I just start coming over the tops of these bushes and trees and it was just I was just having a blast honestly. Just wanted to show a little bit of this footage. So this right here was the first rock formation that we came upon. This is, uh, I don't know the name of the mountain, I don't think there's any particular name, but right up against the edge of it is the Hanunki Heritage Site. And then to the right of this mountain here is Loy Canyon. And so me and Steve flew up basically Loy Canyon and then I went over the back end of it, or the north end of it, and then he stayed down in the canyon and then we met back around the other side. So that's what this rock formation is. But you notice here, I'm using my regular brakes again. My, my tabs, I've pulled them all the way back in. My trims, I've pulled all the way back in. And that's because when I get into canyon areas, I'm not really sure how the wind's going to be interacting with the landscape. So I want a wing that is as stable as possible. So I'm not tip steering anymore and I haven't changed the trajectory of the wing. I've put it back to its original trajectory. And one thing I notice watching these videos and doing voiceovers on these things is how much I dork around with my phone. Uh, I don't know why I do that other than, you know, I want to capture everything I can and honestly this flight you could you were just overwhelmed with how beautiful it was I mean you just wanted to look around so much which is why I'm looking around so much so sorry about that So here I was trying to come a little bit lower, but um, I didn't get as low as I wanted. But this is on the other side of this humongous rock formation is the Plotki Heritage Site, which is a main attraction in Sedona as well. Um, the sun was kind of in my eye, so I couldn't really see as well. 
but the area around here is just really beautiful, and I believe this is called Red Canyon here. So I flew through here a little bit and then saw some balloons off in the distance and figured, let's go take a look. Here I caught up with one of the balloons, and actually there's another one over the ridge towards the sun, which I fly to a little bit later. But this one I saw uh, coming in for a landing, and they were trying to figure out where to land. They had their chase cars, uh, vans, on the road, because they thought he was going to land right there. But then I think the wind was drifting him a little bit south, which is towards me. And then... Uh, I just did some loops around, people were waving at me and taking video and pictures and it was just cool to see this balloon kind of mid-air um, at the same level with it and it was just a really cool experience and of course the scenery was beautiful there. Um, there was a guy down on the ground with the chase fans waving at me. Uh, so this was just a couple loops around here and a couple tight turns that I did. And, went back over the ridge. Why do I stick out my foot like that straight? I have no idea. <laughs> Other than I think maybe it helps me fly better, I don't know. But I noticed after watching these videos and doing turns, I was sticking my legs straight out like uh, Peter Pan. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, don't ask me. So at this point, me and Steve have uh, done some loops around those two balloons. We've moved on and we're actually heading back to where we took off from. Uh, and I caught up with him and I was coming underneath him pretty low. Um, and he was coming up to me. I couldn't tell if he could see me or not until I got in front of him, kind of. But I let go of my gas and kind of drifted downward a little bit. And then, this is kind of a little bit longer clip, but... Uh, I let off the acceleration so I can drop down and do some low flying again. And that rock formation straight ahead is called the Coxcomb in Sedona. And we're coming in from the northeast side of it now, heading to the southwest. Uh, it's a really cool rock formation if you see it from the side. So as I started to drop down here and come in low, I noticed this lady had stopped on the road and you'll see her in just a minute as I get over the road and she's just, she's 
she's waving at me and videotaping. She probably thought I was coming in for a landing or something because I was so low. But um, I just gave her a wave and then continued to drop down and fly a little bit lower. This was probably some of the funnest flying right here was uh, after I saw her and waved and I even got lower and was just coming right over the treetops and it was just a blast. Just really loved it. And there's the coxcomb to the right. And we are probably about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so from landing at this point. canyon I found and I'm coming down it and I start to get lower and then I just looking a little bit further ahead and I see some power lines coming up so I'm like nah I'm gonna get out of there um, and that's the one thing about paramotoring is you're always looking for things like uh, power lines you don't want to catch those you don't want to catch anything like towers or communication towers so you're always looking out for those kind of things sticking up from the ground uh, so you don't wreck and this is kind of like our final approach here and I finally got Steve in front of me he was going really low and I'm just kind of following him along the ridges dorking around with my phone again and checking out our GPS to see exactly where we are and where we need to be and so uh, followed him for a little bit and set up for a landing here coming up. Okay, so this is a pretty good view, a little bit of where we took off from. This is a remote controlled uh, enthusiast runway that they operate under a special use permit on the National Forest. And when we took off, nobody was there, obviously, because we got there like cracked on. But um, there was two modelers, uh, remote control modelers, that were getting ready to fly their planes. So. We were coming in to check things out. We had to take a look at the windsock to see which way the wind was blowing. And then uh, I noticed Steve was getting ready to set up for a landing. So I did some circles around it just to see what the situation was. And then honestly, I didn't want to land. So I went and flew around a bit more. Um, I actually went up probably to about a thousand feet. Uh, here I'm checking actually my fuel. I'm using uh, a mirror that points back to my gas tank and the numbers on it so I can check the levels of my fuel. So 
Um, I did a little bit more flying, and then you'll see coming up here, uh, I start to gain altitude, which I've done here, probably at about 800 feet. And now I'm just gonna do some series of tighter turns just to bleed off some energy and have a little bit of fun, honestly. Um, this is one of the, my favorite things to do. If you look towards the runway there, you can see Steve actually on his wing and he's coming in for a landing. And you'll see him right there in his shadow. And so I can tell he is going towards the north. So I'm figuring the wind is blowing from the north because he came in to, uh, to land in that direction. So, but it just feels weird up top. It doesn't feel like a north wind. So I decided to swing by and look at the windsock one last time. But really, at that level, when you start to get a little bit lower, there was hardly any wind at all. So uh, landing in that direction was probably the smartest because it just gave you a lot more room to do that. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just circling around, doing my final circle, and then I get up to about 100 feet, and then I switch my motor off. I don't ever want my motor on when I'm landing because I don't want anything to happen where I trip and then my lines go into my propeller or something like that. So I get up to about 100, 120 feet and then I turn off my engine and that's going to happen about right there. I'm getting out of my seat, uh, coming in and getting ready for landing, pulling on the right brake a little bit to get it to straighten back out, now just letting them up, letting pretty much it do its thing and not apply any brakes until like the last minute. And so you'll see I'll come in here and pretty much skid and then come to a stop. And that's that. Great flight. Ah.